Okay, uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're looking at this. Uh, we talked about this in the past, but uh, uh, we haven't gone over it real strongly, and I want to make sure that you guys have a quick review. And one of, and what I want to talk about first is the current ratio, and then the quick ratio. The current ratio is all your current assets divided by your current liabilities. Now let's look at this uh, little balance sheet here. Not very complex and the format's not very good either, but uh, if you look at the um, at the assets here, cash, short-term investments, receivables, inventories, and prepaid expenses, those are going to be your current assets right there. Long-term notes receivable, property, plant, and equipment, of course, are long-term assets, and they're even listed like that on the balance sheet, long-term assets. So we're going to take um, current assets, and we're going to divide it by current liabilities. And right down here, you can look at our liabilities. We have accounts payable, long-term debt, and owner's equity. Well, accounts payable is the only um, uh, short-term or current liability we have. So the current ratio then is going to be the current assets divided by the current liabilities this divided by this 6.97 uh, the current ratio is a um, ratio that that looks at the strength of the company the ability to pay its own own debt let me move my cursor there um, when uh, the current ratio is large and 6.97 is pretty good actually um, that means I can pay I can I have seven times the current assets that I need to pay my current liabilities uh, that's a pretty cool that's a pretty strong strong statement and uh, the current ratio is looked at a lot by um, by investors and by people who are being asked to uh, loan money to a uh, to a company another one is another ratio is called uh, the acid test ratio or the quick ratio same thing both of these uh, mean the same thing and the quick ratio or acid test ratio is basically comprised of cash receivables and marketable securities or in this case our short-term investments. Uh, it, in, it excludes inventories and prepaid expenses because those can't be turned into cash quickly. Uh, receivables hopefully could be returned to turn into cash within 30 days. Um, short-term investments in cash, well, they're they're all. This is uh, short-term investments can be turned into cash in a short in just you know hours, and cash of course is already cash. Uh, prepaid expenses cannot be turned into cash. It's we've paid for a. Um, a, um, a an insurance policy or uh, some rent or something it's going to be difficult to, to turn that into cash again inventories we can turn it into cash but we've got to sell it that, that means shipping it that means finding the buyer that means negotiating with the buyer and uh, getting him to pay us and all that can take way more than 30 days so we um, uh, we exclude inventories and prepaid expenses and basically include cash, short-term investments or marketable securities, and receivables. And so our, it's going to be uh, Current, and a current assets, less inventories and short-term short investments, divided by ooh, better watch this thing. See, there we go. 
divided by uh, uh, current liabilities. So we keep our denominator the same and our numerator gets smaller. So our, our num numerator becomes that number, what we had before, minus inventories minus prepaid expenses or 23,500. This, uh, the current liabilities, is still the same as what we had up here. And so the quick ratio for this balance sheet is 2.35. As you can see, same company, uh, the quick ratio is much, much, much more stringent. And um, the uh, and is, is usually uh, smaller than the current ratio by uh, uh, two or three times. Uh, in this case, we've got a current ratio of nearly seven, a quick ratio of 2.35. Still, still a strong number. Uh, this is this is a pretty good thing. So we want to be able to compute the current the quick ratio or acid test ratio, and the current ratio, and that's our uh, that's this little video.